Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, I'm here with the uh, week five picks for the XFL. And a slight recap of the past week. So, in week four, I was two and two in my picks. And on the year, that puts me at 12 and four overall. 75% correct. Uh, unfortunately, one of the games I got wrong, I was uh, fairly certain that DC could beat um, Tampa Bay, but apparently, no, they didn't. In fact, they looked nearly as bad against Tampa Bay as they did the week before against, uh, um, against LA. So, I don't know what's happened with them. I... I mean, maybe it almost seems like they won in the first two weeks because they took advantage of other teams' mistakes, and now teams are playing better, and they're making fewer mistakes, and DC can't win because they aren't. There's no, there isn't a lot of mistakes by the other team to capitalize on. It seems like that. I hope that's not the case, but they do need to play better, regardless. So. I uh, I got that game wrong, and I also got the DC or the uh, New York the New York Guardians game wrong. The New York Guardians somehow they won. I mean they looked terrible in uh, the first two weeks or first three. Yeah, no first two. Wait a minute. First we just played week four. And they're one and three. Yeah, the first three weeks they looked terrible. And they were totally defeated. Hadn't won a game yet. And then they uh and then they won somehow. Don't know. So anyway, um This is what I got for this week. So you can see that uh, these these have the game times and who I'm picking. On um, ironically, on Saturday I'm picking both home teams next Saturday, and then uh, and then next Sunday I'm picking both visiting teams. So I'm taking Houston uh, over Seattle, and then I'm taking Dallas over the New York Guardians, even though the Guardians won this week and. Dallas will be without um, Landry Jones. Possibly. I don't know for sure, but he's got a knee injury. It doesn't look like he's going to play at least for next week. So, um, even knowing that he's going to be out, I'm still going to take Dallas. And then in the Sunday games, and you can see the times here and, and what channels they're on, I'm taking Seattle to beat DC because DC just... They, they look very lackluster, and St. Louis looks like a very exciting, energetic, um, well-accomplished team. So, much as it pains me to say that, I think St. Louis is probably going to beat them. And then uh, you've got the uh, Vipers over the uh, LA Wildcats. Even though the Wildcats are at home, and even though... Uh, two weeks ago, they handily defeated D.C. I think the Vipers, offensively, the Vipers look pretty good. And actually, defensively, they looked good against D.C. too. Um, but they, um, even in week one, where they only scored three points, they moved the ball up and down the field. They just couldn't get it in the end zone. So I think they're slowly correcting that, whatever the problem was that prevented them from scoring touchdowns. And so now they, they look a lot better, and I, I think they're going to beat L.A. So that's my picks. You got um, the Saturday games. I'm taking Houston over Seattle, and then I'm taking Dallas over New York. And then I'm taking St. Louis over D.C. in D.C. And then I'm taking the Vipers over the L.A. Wildcats in LA. So, um, impressions for
from this week now um, as we're heading into week five of the season. Um, I think the play has steadily gotten better. I think the teams are learning to play together um, more cohesively. Um, and the first week, it was just a—it was almost like just throwing a bunch of football players on a football field and saying, "Play football." So, but now it's you know, as the teams are working together, as they're practicing more, as they're getting used to each other, I think the quality of play is improving. Receivers are making catches that they should make. The quarterbacks are making passes that they should make in general. Um, and I think things are coming together. So, um, But the defenders need to get better. They've got to work on whatever it is that their problem is. I mean, one of their problems is they can't run the ball. They, that's, I mean, all they do is pass. So they've got to work on that. They've got to figure out a way to run the ball. I mean, you know, they got that guy, Pumphrey, who was, like, all-conference, like, you know, the all-time leading rusher in, in his conference or something. You got a guy like that, you would think you could figure out a way to run the ball. So, and, and they've got to. Because if they become one-dimensional, it doesn't matter who the quarterback is, but, um, you know... Even on top of that, Cardale, um, Cardale Jones, is that what his name is? Cardale, he, he doesn't look like he's that great. So he needs to, uh, I mean, the whole team needs to play better. They need to play better defensively. They need to learn to run the ball a little better. Um, but they, uh. We'll have to see. I mean, I think they they potentially are better than, than some of these teams, but they got to prove it on the field. So, uh, anyway, I'd be interested to hear what everybody thinks. Uh, leave, a, leave a comment below. Give me a like if you like the video. Tell everyone about my channel and about, uh, you know, the, the, the pick video. If there's someone that's interested in the XFL... Um, or, or the DC Defenders, even, really. And uh, I'll be talking to you. So it's going to be Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.